Good morning, my name is Prue or Prue Lou, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm taking you through my work base makeup and it's pretty simple. I'm not gonna do eyeshadow in this look but if you... I do eyeshadow a lot on, on this channel. It's pretty easy to see how I do. I can take you through a work eyeshadow look. Comment down below and let me know. Today I'm actually not going to work so I have laid down sunscreen. I don't normally wear sunscreen when I'm going to work because I'm indoors all day when I don't go outside. But this is the Mecca Cosmetica Save, Save Face SBF 50. And I'm quite oily so I find this really dries down nicely and doesn't feel too extra moisturizing. I like to use the Smashbox Primerizer. Even though I am oily, I do find it's nice to have a primer that is hydrating underneath some of the mattifying products. And I just cover this on my face. So this video was requested by one of my work colleagues, so <laughs> I hope you enjoy. So that's the one. And then at work, I do find that the foundation I get the most compliments on is the Fenty Beauty Foundation. I wear shade 150. I do think that the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour is a reasonably comparable product. So if you don't want to invest too heavily, I'd, I'd start there. So I have already filmed a wear test with this exact base makeup poster shift for you. That will be at the end of the video. It's just that at 5.30 in the morning, I can't, I can't talk to the camera like a normal person. So I'm just getting the Fenty foundation. I put it on the back of my hand and then dipping my brush in I'm using the MAC 170. This is my favorite foundation brush. And then I just sort of place it on I tend to just cover my face and then I will use a like essentially sort of a buffing motion and what you're doing is just trying to get rid of any of those lines and you're trying to mesh the foundation into your skin. I'm not going super hard but I'm just trying to you want the foundation to look like skin and not like it's sitting on top of your skin. I'm just going to go on with another dip. So I do find around my nose and my upper lip are the worst spots to get foundation to stay. But this one, I find at least it's still kind of there later. And then if you can see, you can't really see that I've got foundation on. My skin is a lot more evened out. Then moving into concealer, I do like the NARS Radiant Creamy. A bit bougie when it comes to my products and this is in vanilla and I just like to dab a little bit under my eyes it's just gonna help cover those dark circles around my nose and my upper lip are my most trouble areas and then I'm just gonna help try and get rid of some of that redness then moving into a concealer brush I do have the Zoeva concealer brush but I find that any brush that is sort of densely packed like this can be quite good. This is the Zoeva and this is my Jessup brush. Just densely packed little brushes. I'm going to use the Jessup today because I do like my Jessup brushes. And we're just going to sort of try and blend this in, getting it in as close to underneath the eye as you're comfortable with. You just don't want that line underneath your eye where it's really obvious that you've put product on. So this is going to be the base look that you'll see in my Bare Minerals Aurora Lights 3 Looks 1 palette video. So I will link that down. I'm not sure if this video is going up first or if Aurora Lights will go up first. And voila, foundation is down. And voila, foundation and concealer are done. We can put them away. 
so and doing brows so I actually don't really have really patchy brows I do have quite a fair bit of brow hair which I guess makes me lucky the benefit precisely my brow pencil in shade 4 I've got quite a few different brow products so I've got the billion dollar brows I've got the Colourpop brow pencil I don't particularly notice a huge difference in product I just I like the packaging of the benefit so I keep I always pick it out uh, the still I stay all day you would have seen me use this a few times and this is a felt tip brow liner I find that I'm at risk of messing up my brows more with that one but I do like it for a brow product I just need more practice with it personally so let's bring you in so with my brows you can see I've got this part up here and these pointy bits go up and then I've got to be a sparseness here on this side no pointy bits going up and not as sparse they say that that the sparseness happens because you, if you are a side sleeper so really what that would indicate is that I sleep on this side I'm in bed and apparently a silk pillow is the way to avoid that I haven't tried it so I can't tell you so as you can see I was just bringing those little strokes in just to fill that area in and then I'm just going to bring this in so it's more straight. I want to make it so that these aren't so pokey up, but that they are still there. I used to hate these and I've just come to accept them um, as part of my features now. And then with this one, I just sort of gently draw this one in as well. Oh, I need to get my brow. I need to wax my brows again. And I'm just trying to give a bit more definition here. This is for me is a pretty quick thing. Then getting the other side, the spoolie, I'm going to brush it in. That's just going to help mesh the product a bit better into your brow so it's not as obvious that you just drew them on. Um, my brow routine is quite simplistic. And we are finished with that. Then moving in, I tend to just cover my face. This is my hourglass ambient powder. I'm nearly like pen in one. Um, I actually don't really think I can see any of these colors on my face. So I have been, Radiant Light has the most need to be used. So I've just been covering my face in this lately. There is something about the effect that it creates And I bet you, now that I look back at this in camera, I'm going to be like, oh my god, I can see it. I can see it. Um, but generally in the morning, I just find this gives you a nice blurring effect. I don't think it's a completely necessary step, but I do find it's nice to have a light dusting of any sort of powder over your foundation. Just to help mesh it a little bit better. And like setting your foundation in this scenario is not what this powder is meant for, but that's how I like to use them. And then my final step for my base is just going to blush. The blush I used in my wear test is this one, and this is the MAC Extra Dimensional Blush in Selected. I don't think you can get this in Australia, and I'm sorry. And I don't tend to wear bronzer or highlight when I'm going to work. I just find it's quite intense. And I'm just using that same brush I used before. I'm just giving a little mesh and so I'm going slightly below this is where I would put highlighter and this is where I would bronze or contour and I'm just giving it a nice gentle glow and doing it on the same side as well and you just want to kind of make sure it's even blush isn't too worrying when it comes to work uh, I, yeah I feel like people get more offended by highlighter and intense bronzer so let's do lips quickly I haven't actually chosen what color um, I did at a point create a safe workstation of lip colors because some people some people are rude and they don't like lip colors they don't like intense lip colors at work so I did actually at one point have a selection of lipsticks that were acceptable for work and 
I do tend to sort of go between using the Too Faced Melted Matte Formula and the Kat Von D lipsticks that I have. This one is Lovecraft. And I, I've not had a rude comment for this one. But I find this formula lasts quite a while. It dries down nicely. Because I'm not very good at redoing my lipstick at work. And voila, that is my base. So I will come back and show you how I do it. I'm also getting my hair cut today, so let's show you my hair. You can see I've still got a bit of that old angled bob, and I think I'm just gonna go shorter, maybe. Ooh. But this is my hair currently. So I'm getting my hair cut in about half an hour. So I'll come back and show you how I sort of look after my hair, how I maintain the face in a bit. And then my favorite all time spray is one of the Urban Decay D Slick spray. I do like the Makeup Forever Fix and Protect spray. That seems quite nice. I just get very oily and this is definitely an oily girl step. But I will then cover my face in the setting spray. And then just do all my makeup, man, it makes me hot. So we need to have a fan off. Ugh. Right, and then the eye look that I'm going to do with this one will be in the Bare Minerals video. So, thank you. I'll see you soon for a check-in. And just so you know, it's 8.30 a.m. right now. Right, unfortunately, I just had an eyeshadow mess. And it's, it's meshed into the powder under my eye. Oh. So, I'm just going to go in again with the Radiant Creamy. in vanilla and blend that out. I thought I'd best show you that I did this for this look. And then just bringing back into that radiant light shade so that we aren't completely ruined. So it's a little bit even. There we are. There is my work base after I've messed it up. Definitely not a work eyeshadow look, though I wouldn't wear this to work. And oh, my favorite eyeshadow for work is definitely the Stila Eyes of the Windows to the Soul. It is beautiful, neutral very hard to mess up and it would look beautiful on most people anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon for like a midday check-in and then you'll see me on another day hello hello and this is about the midday check-in this is probably pretty accurate for my workday face nice and sweaty oh and the new hair <laughs> so oh, i'm feeling very hot I just sort of rush back, but this is probably how my face is about midday. Maybe a bit of sweat, maybe a bit of oil. I do just get quite oily. So that's when I move into, I've got the MAC Studio Fix. This is a powder foundation. This is the color NW18. I've upgraded the puff to one of the Sephora puffs. I just like the feel of this one better than the other ones. I think I threw theirs out. But if you ever see them, you sort of know what I mean. And I just give myself a good little powder. And just sort of use the puff to disintegrate any oils and move it in. But I try not to get too powdery. That is a risk. I tend to always leave the foundation around my mouth and chin. But I just, ugh, I tend to just feel pe better once I've done this to myself. This is about where that lip will be at, and I'll top that up at this stage. And then, yeah, otherwise, I don't do anything else to it, and it looks like it does in the next clip. So, to prove after work, here we go.
Alright, so this is sort of my face end of day. I haven't filmed this face, but I'm going to film the exact same face. So I do top up with powder once during the day, but let's bring you in. So I've changed my lips because that they just know where throughout the day. It's 7.30 p.m. So this is probably 13 ounce. So you can see I do get really oily and you can sort of see that going on here. I do get loss of foundation from my upper lip. The blush is sort of still there, but not the same. But I think it looks alright. I actually have some blotting powder, so let's see how oily I am. It's a fair amount of oil. But I feel like the foundation all leaves from this area and that just constantly happens to me. I haven't found a fix for that. But I feel like this is... I'm pretty happy with this full face. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.